They were called the Shang. Once little more than shadows, their existence is no longer in doubt. The Shang created China's first dynasty, but destroyed themselves in the process. Their saga is carved into strange animal bones in a language we are just beginning to understand. 3,000 years back in time and deep beneath the surface of China lay the birthplace of their kingdom. Called Great City Shang, it's the center of an archaeological manhunt that began a century ago. Today, a new generation continues the search. The goal is irresistible. For what they hope to find is the dawning of China itself. In central China, a night watchman approaches a building that holds evidence of an ancient mystery. This dismal resting place, filled with human remains, is the legacy of the mysterious Shang dynasty. Some 3,000 years ago, hundreds of people were slaughtered and buried here. Miles away, another mystery. A bizarre workshop littered with skulls. The skull caps are severed. But for what grotesque purpose did the Shang use them? Ancient writings cast a dark shadow on the Shang. The heart of the last Shang King was evil. The crowds intoxicated themselves, and the rank smell was perceived on high. Therefore, heaven had no mercy for them. While the ancient Egyptians reached the height of their power, the Shang city-state dominated northern China. They waged successful campaigns against a host of rivals, including the Zhou, the Tufang and Gongfang tribes. Here in Beijing, the nation's capital, the hustle and bustle of new China is rapidly overtaking the old. China's march into the future could obliterate evidence of its first true dynasty before it can be discovered. Who were the Shang? 3,000 years ago, they laid siege to northern China in a ceaseless quest for domination. According to legend, they paid homage to their gods with endless sacrifices of blood. These accounts were dismissed as fiction, a mystery buried in the folds of time. Today, finding the lost world of the Shang is a race against time. At the Beijing Institute of Archaeology, New technologies are harnessed in the search for this elusive dynasty. It's a priority so vital, it has become an international effort that includes experts from the United States. Led by Dr. K.C. Chong of Harvard University, the team recorded their early discoveries on home video. Joined by experts from Missouri and Minnesota universities, they began work in 1992. Early on, they uncovered a Neolithic settlement dating back to 2000 BC. It contained the remains of sacrificed cattle. Such ritual sacrifices have been linked to the Shang. 
Whether these are the remains of their ancestors is a puzzle yet to be solved. The most ambitious goal of the Chinese-American team is to find the dynasty's first capital, known as Great City Shang. Buried deep beneath the ground, it's an archaeological needle in a haystack. To look for clues, MIT geophysicist David Sist will help deploy a wide range of high-tech equipment. One of the advantages of the technology right now is being able to use electromagnetics and ground penetrating radar and magnetometry and satellite data to be able to bring to bear all these different things to penetrate the ground more deeply. If you're looking for a very small object in tens of square kilometers, um, the main problem is trying to see things underground that are not, not visible. You wouldn't be able to see just by walking around. Based on ancient historical accounts, the first capital of the Shang is hidden near the present-day city of Xiangzhou in Hunan province. This, is a, this aerial photo is very useful to mm -hmm. see the, the current course of the Yellow River running from west to east, and this is the old course. The ancient stronghold they are looking for is buried somewhere within an area of 40 square miles under several feet of sediment. This says that there's, there's two walls around the city. For Dr. Robert Morochek of Harvard University, the discovery of Great City Shang is a crucial link to solving the mysteries that enshroud China's first verified dynasty. During the reign of Shang, the city was smothered by silt from a great flood. Centuries later, when the Shang were defeated by the Zhou state, a new city called Song was built above it by the deposed Shang royalty. Flooding would claim city song as well. As we find the city and excavate the city, we're hoping that we'll be able to find the ancestral temples and maybe ancestral tablets that would help clarify where Shang came from and the genealogy of Shang and how this great Bronze Age civilization in North China developed and laid the foundation for a lot of the features in Chinese civilization that we see. For centuries, the search for Shang has been plagued with doubt. The legends of their kings were dismissed as fiction by early scholars. Tales of Shang exploits were confined to poetic fantasy and the painter's brush. Then, in 1899, came a clue right out of a detective novel or so the legend goes. In Peking, a Chinese scholar named Wang Yuzhong lay deathly ill. Lying beside his sickbed were strange pieces of animal bone. Because the Chinese ascribed magical powers to dragons, they were called dragon bones and were ground up and consumed as traditional medicine. The bones caught the eye of Wang's colleague, Liu Tiyong. Liu noticed the fragments were covered with mysterious inscriptions. Wang's illness subsided, and later he and Liu wondered who could have carved these ancient symbols. The two scholars combed Peking's traditional pharmacies to save as many of the shells as possible. Thousands of fragments were collected. <laughs> 